Lecture 21. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Virtual University's course on Business and Technical Communication. In this lecture, we will learn to strengthen your persuasive message with an uh, appropriate appeal. We'll also look at how to gain credibility by supporting your persuasive message with relevant facts and how to use attention, interest, desire, and action, uh, the IDA plan, to organize persuasive messages. We'll also look at uh, how to write a message persuading your audience to take action or to grant you an adjustment, and how to design a sales letter around selling points and benefits. When we talk of motivating with persuasive messages, then in business terms, the term persuasion means to uh, influence an audience by informing them about something and by aiding their understanding, by helping them to understand something, and then leaving them free to make their choice. But once you've given them the information that will help them in making a choice, there you are giving the information in such a way that the, you are hoping that the choice that they will make will be the choice that you want them to make. Ethical business people inform customers of the benefits of a product or an action so that customers can recognize how well that product or action will fill a need that these customers truly have. So it's just by informing how a need is going to be fulfilled, that is how you are actually motivating people or persuading people to um, buy a product or take a particular action. Your uh, consideration of customer needs is more than ethical. It is the proper use of persuasion. Aap apne customer ko ye dikha rahe hain ki unki jo zaruriyat hain, aapne unko madde nazar rakha hai aur aapko unka ilm hai. Aur ye ek bahut ethical tarika hai customer ko persuade karne ka. Also, it's uh, more likely that this consideration of customer needs it will evoke uh, the desired response from your customers and colleagues. If you let them know that you're actually aware of their needs, then they're more likely to uh, respond to you the way you want them to respond. Uh, since persuasive messages aim to influence audience who may resist as well, uh, who may not be very open to the ideas that you're trying to sell them, therefore, uh, persuasive messages depend heavily on strategic planning. Because it can happen that what you want to sell or what you want to take audience action, they will be resistant to take that action. They will not be prepared to take that action. That's why you have to do a lot of persuasion. That's why it's better that you plan your message before and plan it very well and understand how you organize it, what you will use in the message, what you will use in the message, कि आप जो रिस्पांस चाह रहे हैं आपको वही रिस्पांस मिले। सो बिफोर यू बिगिन टू राइट अ परसुएसिव मैसेज, आस्क योरसेल्फ व्हाट यू राइटिंग अबाउट। आखिर आप किस चीज के बारे में लिख रहे हैं? हु यू राइटिंग टू? कौन है जो आपका मैसेज पढ़ेंगे? और उनकी क्या जरूरियत हैं? उनकी क्या क्या नीड्स when you're uh, analyzing your audience, take into account their uh, cultural expectations, what they expect from you. Uh, the expectations might be different uh, in one culture from another culture, and also their practices, what they do in different cultures as well, if you're writing across cultures, so that you don't undermine your persuasive message by using an inappropriate appeal or by organizing your message in such a way that it seems unfamiliar or uncomfortable. So keep in mind the audience's cultural perceptions as well when you're uh, organizing your message. When you're writing persuasive messages, uh, you need to keep four things in mind about your audience. And these are needs and appeals, emotion and logic, credibility, and semantics. Let's have a look at each of these um, individually. Needs and appeals. What do we mean when we talk about the audience's needs and appeals? Some researchers believe that certain needs have priority and that the most basic needs, such as safety and security, 
must be met before a person will seek to fulfill higher level needs such as esteem and status. Zahir hai agar ek insaan ki sabse basic to needs yehi hain ki wo secure ho, wo safe ho aur baaki jo needs hain uski status acha ho, self esteem ho, society mein esteem ho wo baad mein aati hain. But you need to keep in mind that different people have different needs and everyone's needs differ. So people respond differently to any given message. And based on that, based on what their needs are, you will uh, organize your message. For example, not everyone is interested in economy or fair play. Some people's innermost needs uh, make appeals to status and greed much more effective. So if you know that these people have their, uh, what is more important to them is status or greed, then you will make an appeal accordingly. Uh, to accommodate these individual differences, you need to analyze the members of your audience and then construct a message that appeals to their needs. So, whatever needs you will be, you will be able to make a message so that they can appeal to their needs and feel that our needs will be complete from this point, our needs or our desires will be complete from this point. Now, another thing that we mentioned was emotion and logic. جو کہ ہم نے کہا تھا کہ آڈینس میں ہمیں مدد نظر رکھنی ہے When people's needs are not being met they are likely to respond emotionally ظاہر ہے اگر کوئی انسان کچھ چاہ رہے ہیں اور وہ نہیں ہوتا تو ان کا کوئی نہ کوئی emotional response اس پہ ہونا خاصا likely ہے For example a person who lacks a feeling of self worth is likely to be sensitive to the tone of respect in a message a collection letter to such a person carefully avoids any hint that the person might be considered dishonorable because you realize that that person lacks self-worth and they're more likely to feel uh, sensitive about uh, anything that you say and they're more likely to read more into a message which even hints at them being dishonorable. Uh, although emotional issues can be a pitfall for persuasive messages, emotional issues اگر ہوں وہ persuasive messages میں ان کو encompass کرنا ان کو deal کرنا خاصا مشکل ہو جاتا ہے but you can actually call on human emotion as long as your emotional appeal is subtle if you are not using a very obvious emotional appeal then you can with a subtle emotional appeal you can actually reach out to your audience you can make use of the emotions surrounding certain words for instance the word freedom brings forth strong feelings such and also uh, words such as success, prestige, credit record, etc. All these evoke strong feelings, strong emotions amongst the readers. So you can, you can make use of these words to make sure that you are actually uh, using the right type of appeal to, um, uh, to reach out to their needs. Now emotion and logic work together in a unique way. Uh, people need to find rational support for an attitude that they've already em embraced emotionally. So if, they, if people have an attitude, uh, they have an emotion that you're aware of, then those people are trying to find a logical appeal to that uh, need as well. And to help satisfy this need, a logical uh, appeal calls on human reason. Whatever you think that your audience's audience ki needs hai, اور آپ اسی طرح کی اپیل استعمال کریں ان کی نیڈز کو پہنچنے کے لیے نیڈز تک پہنچنے کے لیے تو اس میں آپ کو ہیومن ریزننگ کو بھی مد نظر رکھنا ہوگا Now the third thing that we will look at we were going to look at is credibility Your credibility is your capability of being believed because you are reliable and because you are worthy of confidence جو آپ کے آڈینس کے خیال میں آپ ہیں اسی سے آپ کی credibility establish ہوگی اگر آپ کے پڑھنے والے کو یہ لگے کہ آپ سچے ہیں تو پھر آپ credible ہیں آپ کی جو بات ہے اس پہ وہ یقین کریں گے اگر لیکن آپ کے message سے ہی insincerity نکلے اور آپ کے پڑھنے والے کو یہ لگے کہ آپ کا تو message insincere ہے شاید یہ جو آپ بات کریں گے سچی ہو ہی نہیں سکتی تو پھر آپ کی credibility کم ہو جائے گی اسی طرح اگر آپ کے previous correspondence میں یا previous جو آپ کا interaction رہا ہے اپنے client کے ساتھ اس سے ان کو لگا ہے کہ آپ سنسیر ہیں یا نہیں سنسیر اس سے بھی آپ کی credibility میں فرق پڑے گا اور جس طرح وہ آپ کے آگے future messages کو respond کریں گے وہ effect ہوگا 
uh, for you to persuade a skeptical or hostile audience members. The audience must believe that you know what you are talking about and that you are not trying to mislead them. अगर आपको लगे कि आपके जो ऑडियंस हैं वो कुछ हॉस्टाइल हैं तो इसलिए इसमें इसके लिए बहुत ज़रूरी है कि आप उनके साथ इस तरह का आपकी रिलेशनशिप हो इतना उनको आप पे फेथ हो कि वो ये ना समझें कि आप उनको मिसलीड कर रहे हैं या आपको शायद अपनी जो फील्ड है उसके बारे में पता ही नहीं है वन ऑफ द बेस्ट वेज़ टू गेन क्रेडिबिलिटी इज़ टू सपोर्ट योर मैसेज विद फैक्ट्स टेस्टमोनियल्स डॉक्यूमेंट्स गारंटीज स्टिस्टिक्स research results etc are all uh, facts information material that provide seemingly objective evidence for what you have to say so they make your message more credible so if you include any of these as uh, appropriate then your message is likely to come across as being more credible and consequently you are likely to come across as being a more credible person obviously if for example you are using statistics that are not relevant to the message that you have to give then they will not really do much to add to your credibility so you have to add information add facts that are relevant to the information that you're giving out and also if you're using any sources or if you've referred to any sources or you've gained your information from somewhere else then it helps to name your resources especially if they are respected by your audience because then you are showing your audience how credible you are and that these even the people that you are consulting or the sources that you are consulting are credible as well it helps uh, put you in the same bracket as those sources and it gives you more credibility as well other ways of gaining credibility are being enthusiastic your excitement about the subject of your message can infect your audience if you are enthusiastic then your audience will be enthusiastic as well uh, also being sincere your honest genuineness uh, good faith and truthfulness helps you focus on your audience's needs if you come across as being sincere then the audience feels that you are aware of their needs and you are actually sincere to their needs as well also if uh, the audience perceives of you as being an expert your knowledge of your message's subject area or even of some other area helps you give your audience the quality information necessary to make a decision so if you are an expert then obviously you will have more credibility because you can give out the relevant and correct information you are also credible if you have good intentions your willingness to keep your audience's best interest at heart helps you to create persuasive messages that are ethical so if you really have your audience's good will at heart and your intentions are really good then your messages will uh, your persuasive messages will obviously come across as being ethical if you are trustworthy uh, you are honest and dependable then that can also help you get your audience's respect also if you can establish common ground if your beliefs attitudes and background experiences are like those of your audience then you can help your audience identify with you you and your audience can actually share common ground and uh, if you feel that you think similarly about certain things then you can actually use that to your benefit and to uh, stress your credibility now lastly Uh, the last thing that we need to keep in mind or the final thing that we need to keep in mind is semantics the words you use or the words you choose to state your message say much more than their dictionary definitions depending on what you want to say you need to choose the right word for example useful beneficial and advantageous may be considered synonyms they all have the same meaning yet these three words are not interchangeable you cannot use any of these uh, you cannot say that i will use either one or the other and the meaning will remain the same let's have a look at what i mean if you say she suggested a useful compromise then what you're implying is that the compromise allowed the parties to get to work it was useful and work could begin um on the other hand if you're saying she su- she suggested a beneficial compromise then you're implying that the compromise not only revolved but also had a positive effect 
perhaps for both parties it was beneficial and perhaps it was beneficial for both um, in the third uh, instance if you're saying she suggested an advantageous compromise then you're implying that the compromise benefited her the person who suggested it or her company much more than it benefited the other party so although all of these uh, useful um, beneficial advantageous all of these have a similar meaning their use makes their meaning very different so you need to be careful of that as well what are what is the word you're choosing and what is the implication of choosing that particular word another way semantics can affect positive uh, persuasive messages is the variety of meanings that people attribute to certain words uh, they, this means that there may be words which can have more than one one meaning abhi to humne dekha ke do teen lafz the alfaz the aur unka ek hi meaning tha lekin unke istemal mein unka meaning change ho gaya isi iske baraks aise bhi ho sakta hai ki lafz ek ho aur uske hi multiple meanings ho so you need to make sure that you are actually choosing a word where the meaning in which it is to be used is clear because abstractions are subject to interpretations because they refer to things that people cannot experience with their senses as well also you need to keep in mind that abstractions are subject to interpretations because they refer to things that people cannot experience with their senses so basically if you're talking of abstract things if you're talking of things which are not tangible then you need to be very careful in how you refer to them because they uh, will have they will be interpreted differently by different people uh, jo jo cheeze tangible hain jo facts hain jinke bare mein ek cheez ka ek hi matlab ho sakta hai uska to sab log hi ek matlab nikalenge lekin jo aisi cheeze hain jo zara abstract hain jinke different log different meanings nikal sakte hain unke liye aapko unko carefully aapko express karna hoga you may be able to sell more flags by appealing to your audience's patriotism which may be interpreted in many ways uh, then by describing the color and size of the flags for example zahir hai aap jab jo ke ek patriotism ki jo feeling hai usko different log different tarah interpret karte hain aap unme se koi interpretation leke flags ya jhande bech sakte hain lekin agar aap kahenge ye aap pakistan ke jhande kharide hain inka ye rang hai inke par is tarah chand tara bana hua hai उससे आप झंडे नहीं बेचेंगे बेच सकते हैं उससे कोई भी मोटिवेट नहीं होगा झंडे खरीदने में लेकिन जब अगर आप इस तरह उनको परसुएट करें कि उनकी इमोशंस को आप अपील करें उनके पेट्रियाटिज्म को अपील करें तो फिर वो आपके झंडे फॉर एग्जांपल बिक जाएंगे यू मे फॉर एग्जा ऑल्सो हैव बेटर लक कलेक्टिंग एन ओवर बिल बाय मैंशनिंग ऑनेस्टी एंड फेयर प्ले देन बाय रिपीटिंग द सम ओड एंड द डेट ऑन विच इट वॉज ड्यू नाउ If, if say you are a collecting agency or if you are providing a service for which you have not been paid the bill is overdue it would be more persuasive if you wrote to the customer and talked to them about fair play and honesty and just mention the d- amount and when it was due rather than stressing on the amount and when it was due because in, by that you are actually putting your customer at guard and you're putting them off but if you're uh, talking about honesty and fair play then you are uh, actually reaching out to their need to be approved of and uh, everybody wants to be seen as an honest person har sab chahte hain ki dusre log unko sachcha samjhe fair samjhe honest samjhe to agar aap wo cheeze include karenge aise alfaz include karenge jisse aap unki tareef bhi kare aur ye kahe ki hame pata hai ki aap ek honest uh, tax paying uh, customer hain लेकिन ये आपकी तरफ पैसे रहते हैं आप इनका हमें वापस कर दें तो इट विल हैव अ मोर पॉजिटिव इफेक्ट ना यू नीड टू आल्सो रिमेंबर दैट व्हेन यू ऑर्गेनाइजिंग परसुएसिव मैसेजेस परसुएजन रिक्वायर्स द इनडायरेक्ट अप्रोच हमने बात की थी कि रूटीन गुडविल मैसेजेस जो हैं वो uh, बहुत जगह आप डायरेक्ट अप्रोच इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं क्योंकि लोग जो हैं वो खुश होते हैं रूटीन मैसेज पढ़ के लेकिन परसुएसिव मैसेजेस में बहुत बार आपको इनडायरेक्ट अप्रोच इस्तेमाल करनी होती है क्योंकि ज़रूरी नहीं है कि जो जिस चीज़ पे आप लोगों को परसुएट करना चाहें वो फौरन ही उस पर परसुएट हो जाए वन स्पेशलाइज वर्जन ऑफ द इनडायरेक्ट अप्रोच इज द आइडा प्लान दिस दिस बेसिकली मीन्स अटेंशन इंटरेस्ट डिज़ायर एंड एक्शन इन द अटेंशन फेज 
you convince the audience right at the beginning that you have something useful or interesting to say. You don't say what it is, but you catch their in, uh, attention. You uh, let them know that what is to be followed will be interesting and useful. The audience wants to know what's in this message for me. So you will try to tell them without making extravagant claims or threats and without bringing up irrelevant points. Zahir hai, ek audience ko ye, uh, ye padhna chahenge ya unko ye chahiye jab ye khat padhenge ki isme mere liye mujhe kya fayda hai. To isliye aap uh, bahut extravagant claims nahi karenge, aisi bahut unchi unchi baatein nahi karenge, lekin aap to the point unko बताएंगे कि इसमें आपके जो आप जो उनसे एक्शन चाह रहे हैं वो करने में ऑडियंस का फायदा क्या है फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू से समथिंग लाइक यू हैव मेंशन सेवरल टाइम्स इन द पास्ट टू वीक्स दैट कंस्ट्रक्टिंग एन एम्प्लॉय स्केड्यूल बिकम्स इंक्रीजिंगली डिफिकल्ट लेट मी शेयर एन आइडिया दैट कुड सब्सटैंशली रिड्यूस द टाइम यू स्पेंड मेकिंग एंड रिवाइजिंग द स्केड्यूल ना इन दिस मैसेज एज यू सी यू आर एक्चुअली एज द राइटर यू आर एक्चुअली letting them know letting the reader know that you are going to be sharing an idea that will reduce their time uh, on on something in doing something so you are actually catching the audience's attention and letting them know that what will follow will be beneficial to the audience in the interest phase you explain how your message relates to the audience you will continue the theme that you started with and by that, doing that you paint a more detailed uh, picture with your words your goal is to get the audience thinking this is an interesting idea couldn't it possibly solve my problems so in the uh, attention phase you've identified what it is that you're going to be talking about you've caught the audience's attention in the interest phase you are now getting them interested in your way of thinking and you are actually um, getting them slightly uh, getting them a bit towards where you want them to be for example um you if you say something like incorporated magazine ran an article in the july 2 issue about a scheduling concept called flex time it gives employees leeway to schedule their own work within certain guidelines two companies prof uh, profile in the article were having problems as we have been with late arrivals long lunches early departures and too many sick days they found it nearly impossible to set up a schedule everyone would adhere to however once these companies instituted flex time their problems practically disappeared ab isi message ke jo humne pichla dekha tha ki kis tarah unne shuru kiya interest uh, attention kis tarah grasp ki reader ki usi message ka agla section ye hai jisme wo detail de rahe hain kuch uh, interest apne audience ka develop kar rahe hain aur ek concept ki baat flex time कॉन्सेप्ट की बात कर रहे हैं जिससे उस कंपनी की प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो सकती हैं एक और कंपनी का एग्जांपल देके। नाउ दिस इंटरेस्ट सेक्शन टाइज टुगेदर अ फैक्चुअल डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूटिंग दिस फ्लेक्स टाइम प्रोग्राम ऑल्सो द बेनिफिट्स रिलेट स्पेसिफिकली टू द अटेंशन फेज दैट केम अर्लियर टू दिस पैराग्राफ दैट वी लुकड एट अर्लियर एज वेल एंड इवन दो द फ्लेक्स टाइम सिस्टम माइट हेल्प इम्प्रूव एम्प्लॉय मोरल that benefit is secondary to the main interest of the intended audience and that is to reduce the frustration of devising useless schedules and therefore employee morale is not mentioned to aap dekhiye ki kis tarah unne jo cheeze zaruri hain jo cheeze audience ki need ko meet karti hain usko un cheezon ko mention kiya hua hai audience jo tha usko uske liye ye jo padhne wale the unke liye ye zaruri tha ki time zaya na ho to isliye us cheez ko highlight kiya hua hai जो दूसरे बेनिफिट्स हैं इस प्रोग्राम को अडॉप्ट uh, करने से उनको हाईलाइट नहीं किया गया इन दर्ड फेज द डिजायर फेज ऑफ अ परसुएसिव मैसेज यू बैकअप योर क्लेम्स एंड देर बाई यू इंक्रीज योर ऑडियंस इज इंटरेस्ट एंड योर ऑडियंस इज विलिंगनेस टू टेक द एक्शन दैट यू सजेस्ट इन द फाइनल इन द नेक्स्ट सेक्शन सो यू मेकिंग शो that you are backing your claims jo bhi aapne cheez ek claim ki usko aap thos kar rahe hain aur aapke jo audience hai wo aur kareeb aa raha hai persuade hone ke when whatever you use to prove your claim make sure that the evidence is directly relevant to your point don't use evidence that is irrelevant now as you see in this example the writer has continued Uh, talking about what he was talking about earlier the he's refer still referring to the articles that were profiling 
uh, the companies that had adopted FlexiTime. And here he says, one of the people interviewed in the article, the head of manufacturing for a $10 uh, million dollar company said, I seem to be spending all my time making schedules and then tearing them up. Now I let my employees figure out their own schedules. I have more time to oversee the work that's being done and to track the quality of the products we ship. Now, see, this is the information ad ki dali hai ke jo ek head of uh, manufacturing ne uh, quote kiya hai interview mein uh, kaha hai unne sirf wohi cheez dali hai us uh, interview mein se jo ke padhne wale ke liye relevant thi ke time kis tarah us head ne uh, us boss ne apna time kis tarah bachaya uh, is example ko continue karte hain isme aage likha hai this company had a flexi time uh, program in full operation within 3 months of deciding to start Attached is a copy of an article about the factors to consider before going to flex time and the three steps involved in instituting it. Now, whatever detail was further necessary to actually implement the program has been attached. It has not been li listed detail in this letter because there, then it, the letter would become too long. So, the attached information has been given as an attachment and it has been referred to in the letter. In the action uh, part, you suggest the action you want your audience to take. All persuasive messages end with a section that urges specific action, but the ending is more than a statement such as institute this program as soon as possible or send me a refund. The, you need to give much more than that. In fact, this section offers a good opportunity for one last reminder of the main benefit that the audience will have from taking the action that you want them to take. یہ اچھا موقع ہے آپ کے لیے ایک آخری موقع ہے کہ آپ اپنے آڈینس کو یہ ریمائنڈ کرائیں کہ جو آپ ان سے چاہ رہے ہیں کہ وہ قدم اٹھائیں وہ قدم اٹھا کے ان کو کیا فائدہ ہوگا اسی میسج کا کلوزنگ سیکشن کچھ اس طرح ہے لیٹس میٹ ارلی نیکسٹ ویک ان بریکٹس منڈے 3 پی ایم ود اے کوشچن مارک بیکاز دی رائٹر از ناٹ شیور اف دیٹ ٹائم از ایکچولی کنوینئنٹ ٹو ہز کالیگ اور ناٹ to, to see how we might implement a flex time schedule. With a little bit of extra effort, now you could soon be concentrating on something more important than scheduling. So here, the writer is suggesting action, he's suggesting time for a future meeting where they could discuss adopting this procedure because obviously he's trying to persuade the reader to adopt flex time. And again, he in the end, he also gives one last benefit, one key benefit that the reader will have more time if he adopts flex time uh, scheduling. Now, many persuasive messages are written to solicit funds, favors, information, or cooperation. It happens a lot that you want to get some cooperation or some funds or favors from the reader. And in an organization, persuasive techniques are often required to get someone to change policies or procedures, to spend money on new equi equipment, for example, and uh, service to promote a person or to protect uh, turf or territory with, of, of a person within an organization. So all these could be uh, different reasons for writing a persuasive message within an organization. There's a difference between internal persuasive messages and external persuasive messages. Abhi just na humne baat ki ke internally within an organization, personal messages, uh, persuasive messages ka کچھ فرق فنکشن ہوگا اور ایکسٹرنل پرسویسو میسیجز کا فنکشن بھی کچھ فرق ہوگا اور ان کا اسٹائل اور آرگنائزیشن بھی زیادہ فارمل ہوگی این ایکسٹرنل پرسویسو میسیج از ون آف دا موسٹ ڈفیکلٹ پرسویسو ٹاسک یو کین انڈر ٹیک فرسٹلی پیپل آر بزی سو دے ریلیکٹن ٹو ڈو سم تھنگ نیو اٹ ٹیکس ٹائم اینڈ اٹ آفرز نو گارنٹیز آف اے ریوارڈ ان ریٹرن دے ڈونٹ نو یو دے نیڈ ٹو ٹیک آؤٹ اے لاٹ آف ٹائم ٹو ایکچولی Uh, take the action that you want them to take. Secondly, uh, there are a lot of competing requests. A lot of, uh, for example, if you look, uh, trying to persuade a company and ex a co or a, um, uh, somebody who is not part of your organization but somebody outside of your organization to give you funds, then that person might have a lot of other people requesting him or her for funds as well. So you will have a lot of competition. And in fact, public relations departments of many large corporations receive so many requests for donations to worthy causes that they must sometimes resort to lotteries to decide which one to support. They'll just take a pick, uh, uh, do a um, uh, lucky dip 
and decide which one to uh, give the money to or give the donation to rather than actually looking at each application or each request separately. So uh, in that sense then your persuasive message tends to be more difficult to write if it is to solicit uh, funds or favours from an ex outside organisation. If you are lucky the company might believe in the project or cause that you are uh, trying to persuade them about and also be they might feel that it gives them some benefit to be involved in that or to uh, comply with your request as well and that then is the best use of your persuasive message that then is the best result you can hope from your persuasive message. Also uh, this is more um, effective in the case of requests for professional favours or information uh, because people may believe that they are obliged to pay their dues by helping others. Agar aap, uh, persuade kar paayin logon ko ke ag, aapko help karke unko bhi faida hai aur unka ek un, unki ek obligation banti hai to phir uh, ho sakta hai ke wo aapko help karne ke liye zyada uh, ready ho aur aapko usme faida ho jaye also when you are uh, making a persuasive request take special care to highlight direct and indirect benefits to the reader direct benefits might include a reduced workload for a supervisor who institutes flex time or a premium for someone who responds to a survey. Uh, in the first case, you have a benefit in your organization. In the case, if you are doing a survey in your organization, then what is the benefit you fill out in your survey question? Uh, indirect benefits might include better employee morale or the prestige of giving free workshops to small businesses. Uh, in this case also, uh, better employee morale, then what is the benefit that you have persuasion in your company? Ke andar kisi ko persuade karna hai? Or agar aap apni company ke bahar, for example, kisi aur company ko persuade kar rahe hain ki aapke business ko wo free workshop ko karke dein, to unko kya uh, fayda hoga ye free workshop karne se, to aapne unko ye highlight karna ki unke liye ye prestigious hoga ki wo aapki company ko free workshop karke dein. The, uh, when you want to write a persuasive message for action or a persuasive request for action, then the attention getting device at the beginning of a persuasive request for action is uh, usually shows the reader that you know something about his or her concerns and that you have some reason for making such a request. Agar aap cha rahe hain ki koi aasi aap request kar rahe hain jiske natije mein aap koi action cha rahe hain to phir aapne apne padhne wale ko bhi dikhana hai ki aap uh, unke baare mein kuch na kuch jante hain unki needs ke baare mein unke concerns ke baare mein kuch jante hain aur ye bhi dikhana hai ki aap ye jo request kar rahe hain uske piche koi na koi reason hai and in this type of a persuasive message more than in most others a flattering comment about the reader is acceptable especially if that comment is sincere the body of the letter or memo covers what you know about the problem you're trying to solve uh, with your reader's help it talks about the facts and figures the benefits of uh, helping, the benefits to your reader and also your experience in attacking or tackling the problem. The goal is to give you and your request credibility to make the reader believe that helping you will indeed help solve a significant problem. The most important thing to remember when writing a persuasive request action is to keep your request within bounds. Jo bhi aap request karein, wo aisi karein ke wo actually puri ho sake. Nothing is so distressing as a request so generally all encompassing or so inconsiderate that it seems impossible to grant, uh, no matter how worthy the cause is. Jo bhi aapka cause hai, aap jo request aisi karein ke aapki request grant karne wale ke liye bhi manageable ho. Itni koi, itni badi request na karein ya itni uh, unrealistic request na karein jo ke puri na ho sake kyunke ek request ko na karne ke liye bhi uh, distressing ho jata hai uh, reader ko ek request kisi ki turn down karna to aap request hi is tarah ki karein ki unko na na karna pade also be careful not to doom your request to failure by asking your readers to do all the work for you uh, don't ask your reader to provide all the information that you need because just because you are too lazy to uh, to seek that information or to spend uh, time to save you from embarrassment or inconvenience or to provide total financial support for a cause that nobody else is supporting if because if you make if you're going to make these kind of unrealistic and 
um, inconsiderate requests, then obviously your request is bound to fail. Now, another type of persuasive uh, letter is a sales letter. By and large, sales letters are written by specialized and highly skilled professionals. The letter, sales letter, comes in letter size or larger envelopes with brochures or without brochures. And you, as a skilled professional letter writer, sales letter writer, need to know the laws that govern sales letters uh, because this can help you avoid serious legal problems. If you do not know the laws of uh, writing sales letters, then you need to familiarize yourself with them. Uh, also, you need to be very, very clear that making a false statement in a sales letter is fraud. If the recipient can prove, A, that your intent was to deceive, or that you made the statement regarding a fact rather than an opinion or a speculation, uh, the, the false statement or that the recipient was justified in relying on the statement and also if, if the recipient was damaged by the statement then all this amounts to fraud or even one of these uh, if this uh, even one of these can be proven then they amount to fraud also in using a person's name photograph or identity or any other form of identity in a sales letter without permission from that person constitutes invasion of privacy there are some exceptions, but generally, if you are going to be using uh, any person to promote your uh, product, then you need to have their permission, written permission, to use their name or identity or photograph in your uh, promotional material or your sales letter, because without this, it is invasion of privacy, which is illegal. Uh, there are exceptions, for example, using the photos of uh, members of a local uh, cricket team or football team in um, uh, in a mailing may be legal if the team members op, uh, are public figures in the community but otherwise uh, you will need specific permission from people legal problems can also result from publicizing a person's private life in a sales letter for example stating that the president of a local bank and if you're mentioning that bank by name served six months in prison for income tax evasion is, potentially, is a potentially damaging fact to that person and to that bank. Uh, and this may be considered invasion of privacy, even if that bank is your rival and you want to show how much better you are ethically and how much better your, the, uh, your organization and the people working in your organization are. You cannot malign other people by even if what, they, what you are talking about is true. When you're planning sales letters, you need to keep in mind three steps. And these are similar to those involved in planning any other persuasive message. You need to determine the main idea. In sales letters, it revolves around a selling point and the related benefits. You need to define the audience and you need to choose the approach and format. Now, the main idea, the determining the selling points and benefits. Selling points are the most attractive feature of a product whatever it is that is most attractive about a product is what becomes its selling points. Zahir hai, jo bhi ek product mein sab se umda cheeze hongi, unhi cheezon se attract hoke, koi us product ko kharidega. Consumer benefits are the particular advantages that buyers will realize from these features. Jo bhi features hongi, jo bhi ek uh, product ke selling points hongi, usse jo consumers ko benefits hongi, wo, wo zahir hai, influence karenge ek consumer ko ke wo us product ko kharide. Uh, for example, one selling point of a personal computer might be its numeric keypad. Um, the consumer benefit of this selling point is that the user doesn't need a separate calculator or the skill to type numbers on the regular keyboard. So obviously you can't write about selling points or benefits without a thorough understanding of your subject. So agar aap ne jo bhi aap um, selling point bata rahe hain, uska koi na koi benefit bhi hona chahiye consumer ko, kyunki jab wo benefit hoga, us consumer us benefit ko dekhenge, tabhi wo aapka product khareedne ke liye taiyar honge. Uh, aur us benefit ko highlight karne ke liye, jab tak aapke paas aapne product ki complete puri knowledge nahi hogi, aap uske uh, jo bhi uh, selling points hain, jo bhi benefits hain, unko aap explain nahi kar payenge thik se. The first step in writing uh, any sales letter then is to take a good look at the product 
जो आपका अपना प्रोडक्ट है उसको आप अच्छी तरह देखें उसको अच्छी तरह समझें कि आप क्या चीज़ बेचने जा रहे हैं आस्क योर सेल्फ और सम वन एल्स इफ नेसेसरी एवरी थिंग यू थिंक अ पोटेंशियल बायर माइट वॉन्ट टू नो अबाउट योर प्रोडक्ट सोचें कि आपके प्रोडक्ट के बारे में क्या क्या इन्फॉर्मेशन है जो एक पोटेंशियल बायर को एक ख़रीदने वाले को चाहिए होगी अगर आपको खुद दिमाग में नहीं आ रही सारे सवाल तो किसी से डिस्कस कर लें किसी से पूछें कि अगर मैंने ये प्रोडक्ट बेचना है या अगर आप ये प्रोडक्ट ख़रीदना चाहें तो आप उसको इसके बारे में आप क्या क्या चीज़ देखेंगे और फिर ख़रीदेंगे तो जाहिर है जब आपको ये अंदाज़ा हो जाएगा कि आपके ऑडियंस को क्या क्या इन्फॉर्मेशन चाहिए फिर आप उस हिसाब से उनको इन्फॉर्मेशन देंगे एंड दिस डिफाइनिंग ऑफ द ऑडियंस नीड्स इज़ बेसिकली डिफाइनिंग द ऑडियंस वंस यू आर अवेयर ऑफ द नीड्स then you will define uh, the audience in terms of who the audience is who are the type of people who will be buying your product uh, marketers seek to define consumers in terms of demographics which means age gender occupation income and education and also in terms of psychographics which means personality attitude and lifestyles तो इन चीज़ों को देख के आप या उनको डेमोग्राफिक्स के तौर पे क्लासीफाई करेंगे अपनी ऑडियंस को कैटेगराइज करेंगे या साइकोग्राफिक्स के हिसाब से आप उनकी ऑडियंस आप आप अपनी ऑडियंस के एटीट्यूड्स पर्सनालिटी बिलीव्स लाइफस्टाइल्स देखेंगे उस हिसाब से उनको टारगेट करेंगे या उनका एज ग्रुप वगैरह देख के करेंगे या ये हो सकता है कि आप अगर आप डेमोग्राफिक्स के हिसाब से कर रहे हैं आप देख रहे हैं कि एक स्पेसिफिक एज ग्रुप की खातन के लिए आपने एक प्रोडक्ट डिज़ाइन किया है तो फिर आप उनके साइकोग्राफिक्स देखेंगे कि अब इन खातन की इस पर्टिकुलर एज ग्रुप की में जनरली किस टाइप का लाइफस्टाइल होता है किस टाइप की पर्सनालिटी होती है तो आपने इन दोनों को डेमोग्राफिक्स और साइकोग्राफिक्स को साथ साइड बाय साइड देखना है ताकि आप अपने ऑडियंस को डिफाइन कर सकें इन दिस लेक्चर वी लर्न टू स्ट्रेंथन परसुएसिव मैसेज विद द अप्रोप्रिएट अपील वी लर्न हाउ वी कैन गेन क्रेडिबिलिटी by supporting our persuasive messages with relevant facts irrelevant facts ko humne include nahi karna kyunki unse hamara message weak ho jata hai humne ye bhi baat ki ke hum ne apni persuasive messages mein attention interest desire aur action ko dekhna hai the aida plan a i d a plan uh, so that we can organize our persuasive messages according to this plan we also talked about writing a message to persuade your audience to take action or to grant a request uh, or to grant an adjustment and we looked at how to uh, do that what kind of language to use what kind of layout to use and we looked at how to design a sales letter around selling points and benefits of the product we looked at defining the audience and keeping in mind the audience their demographics and their psychographics how we would uh, sell a product to that audience With this we come to the end of this lecture on persuasive messages until next time Allah Hafiz